All right. <clears throat> we are, as promised, going to do our Randy Map Hydra deck tech video today. Uh, we did the brainstorming video back on Monday, and we kind of got our thoughts collected and put together this deck. We took it on Tuesday and played some standard at our local game store, and we learned some things. <laughs> yes, yes we did. Uh, we didn't sideboard well for uh, all the graveyard interaction that's out there right now. Uh, and I didn't change the sideboard for this video, but just know if you want this to be remotely competitive, you need to put some things in the sideboard to empty out the graveyards. Like the, what's the new one drop? The Sentinel Totem's the only thing I think of as not one drop. Sentinel though. Totem's good one. Um, uh, crook uh, something or other. There's a new one drop that you can sacrifice it to empty out all the graveyards. I don't remember what it's called. It's from Rivals. Right. Um, there's the land. What's the rant? land that does it too? That's uh, one of the deserts. One of the deserts, yeah. One of the deserts. And that'd be good in this deck because you need deserts in the battlefield and graveyard. Anyway, what I'm saying is if you're going to try and build this deck, make sure you sideboard, have in your sideboard some options to clear out your graveyard. Uh, clear out. We played against a pirate deck, and the deck played really well. Things worked fine. And in our other two games, they were both control decks that had graveyard interaction. And before the graveyard interaction started, they started taking our stuff. It was working fine. We've got some stuff in the sideboard I'll show you that if you're playing just a straight up control deck, this can work through. It's okay. Uh, if you're playing against something that's going to end up stealing your creatures out of the graveyard, uh, mm -hmm. you need to have another plan. <laughs> we didn't we didn't plan for that, and that was my mistake because I know it's out there. Uh, God Pharaoh's gift, your scarab god, those are clearly threats right now. Uh, definitely Scarab God. Less now with the way the meta is changing, uh, the God Pharaoh's Gift, but it's still a deck, and that was one of the things we played against uh, Tuesday night. So, that being said, we're going to jump that into our what? deck. We're going to start with the creatures, and we're going to start at the top of our curve with the creatures because that will kind of make everything else make more sense. We are running three copies of the Majestic Mary Arc. Mary Arc. Its power and toughness are each equal to twice the number of creatures you control. And at the beginning of each combat, it will gain flying, first strike, double strike, death touch, haste, hexproof, indestructible, life link, menace, reach, trample, or vigilance, if you have any other creatures in play that have those abilities. So with this deck, we've kind of got a wide range of abilities. So we can get some things out there that will A, make that large, and B, give it a lot of those abilities so that it's uh, maximizing the threat that it is. So three copies of Majestic Mariark, and then the namesake of the deck. We've got four copies of the Ramunap Hydra. It is a Vigilance Reach Trample, 3-3. And it gets plus one, plus one if you control a desert, and plus one, plus one if there's a desert in your graveyard. So once we get to the land base, you'll see we've got a lot of options for getting those deserts into our graveyard to pump those up. And you explained to them, obviously, Perler is why we chose the Mary Arc to go with this, because yeah, it, it, it start, I mean, starts with three factors already that pump that Mary Arc up. If you've so. only got that and the Mary Arc out, then you've got a... If you've got the deserts in your graveyard and in the battlefield, you've got a 5-5 five, five Vigilant Reach Trample, and you've got a 4-4 four, four Vigilant Reach Trample. Just on those two creatures. Just for those two. So, it's a good start. Good. Next, we threw in three copies of Twilight Prophet for two reasons. A, if you get to the City's Blessing, this card is amazing. It can get you right back in a game that you're down on. It allows you to draw an extra card every turn, and it is a target for removal, which may be bad, but if they kill this off, then you still got Mary Arc. You've, you've still got your other two 
threats out there. So, and it's got flying, so at the beginning of combat every turn, your Merry Arc, if it is out there with it, will gain flying as well. Yes, it will. Next, we've got the Raminap Excavator. Mm. This plays along with the Hydra. You have to have a desert in your graveyard to give it the extra plus one, plus one. So as we get into the land base, like I said, you'll see we're going to be putting lands into our graveyard. Uh, this will let us pull those back get some of those lands back from our graveyard so that we can re-sacrifice them or use them again. Uh, whatever the case may be. Good card. Good card. Next we have kind of a kind of a strange card I think for this deck, but it played well with the Miriarch and it's a it's only a three drop. Jungleborn Pioneer. When it enters the battlefield, you create a 1-1 blue mirror folk with hexproof. So that gets you two creatures for your Miri arc, essentially pumping it up four on its power and toughness. And it also gives your Miri arc hexproof at the beginning of every combat. So not a huge threat, but when combined with the majestic Miri arc, it's really good play. Really good. Next, we've got two copies of the Wayward Swordtooth. This is going to let us play an additional land every turn. Ramune up Excavator. So, if something's in the graveyard, we can play a land from our hand and one from the graveyard. If we're late game and we're sacking lands to get some of these abilities, we can bring them back and sack them again. So that just allows us a little bit of replay on some of those lands from the graveyard. And if it's uh, at the beginning of the game, and you've got extra lands in your hand, you can get those out and kind of ramp into some of your bigger creatures. It has a sin and can't attack or block unless you have the City's Blessing. So that's going to help us get the City's Blessing, putting out extra lands. Uh, and then it's a 5-5, five, 3-drop. Five, so that's good all yes. the time. Next we've got four copies of Gifted Aetherborn. That's a 2-drop. 2-3 with Death Touch and Life Link. If you've played Magic recently, you've seen this card. It's good in almost every situation. Uh, it's got the Death Touch and Life Link to give to the Miri Arc if that's out there at the same time. At the beginning of the game, it can really hold off some aggro decks. And late game, you can take out some of those big creatures and gain yourself a little bit of life back. But there's nothing, nothing, no combo in this deck probably better than having the Miri Arc and the Aetherborn out there at the same time. Because the Miri Arc's going to get big. It's going to have the Death Touch and Life Link abilities, uh, and those are valuable all the time. All the time. Next, just uh, kind of to hold off some threats at the beginning of the game, we put in three copies of Narnum Renegade. It is a 1-2, one, 1-drop one with Death Touch, and if you're later in the game, it's got a Revolt trigger that it comes into play with a 1-1 one, one counter, if you've had a permanent, leave the battlefield that turn. So it can be a 2-3 with Death Touch for one. It's a pretty good deal. It's just a cheap, efficient creature that adds the Death Touch ability on to the Mary Arc if we need it to and can take out some threats in the early game. This deck is more set up for the late game, but you've got to be able to get there. So that is our creature base, 25 creatures in total. Now we're running 10 spells. Uh, we'll start with the four copies of Fatal Push. This is what pretty much won the game for us against the pirate deck we played against the other night. Uh, being able to get those fast creatures off the board and save yourself, get yourself a little bit of time so you can get into the rest of your deck is invaluable. So we ran four <coughs> copies of that. Just helps slow things down at the beginning of the game so you can get into that mid-game where you want to be. We're running four copies of Blossoming Defense. There's a lot of removal in standard right now. So if your Mary Arc doesn't have hex proof from the uh, token or whatever, this, or your Hydra's out there and you want to keep it out there because it's giving good abilities to your Miri Arc, whatever the case may be. A lot of removal in standard, so we've got four copies of Blossoming Defense and also two copies of Rush of Vitality. Uh, 
So this, if you put this on another creature, then at the beginning of combat, Mary Arc will gain that hexproof ability. So you can hexproof two creatures in one turn with one card. <clears throat> so that's handy. And then the Rush of Vitality gives Indestructible and Lifelink. So again, more abilities. You could go with something else in this spot, uh, but we like the fact that it gives two abilities that can then be passed on. So that's our spells. Now we'll get into the land base here. Starting with our deserts, we're running three copies of the Desert of the Indomitable. Nice play on this that I used a couple times was on turn two, if you've got two lands in your hand still, you've played two lands, uh, end of turn two before it comes back to your turn three, you can cycle this away, draw a card, next turn, play your Wayward Sawtooth or your Jungle, uh, Ramianak Excava Excavator, sorry, uh, and you can replay that from the graveyard, get it back on the battlefield. So it's just a handy, get it, and it also gets a desert in the graveyard for your Hydra. So it's a handy way to get yourself some extra cards, you can replay it later if you need to, and it gets a desert in the graveyard for the Hydra. So we're running three copies of that, and two copies of the black version, Desert of the Glorified. Same thing, black mana instead of green. <laughs> Same thing. And next we've got three copies of Hashup Oasis. It's a pay one life, get a green. You can pay three, tap and sack a desert, and target creature gets plus three, plus three. So, again, that's another way to get a desert in your graveyard, and it also, once it's there, can be replayed if you want to, mm -hmm. so that you can, you could use that ability twice in one turn, if you've got the mana and deserts available. So, it just worked out pretty well, I think. And then we have the black version of the same card. Pay one life, get a black, or you can pay two black and two others. Sacrifice a desert and put two minus one minus one counters on an opponent's creature. I think this is probably the best sacrifice a desert land in the set. Just my personal opinion. You'd, sometimes there's some big stuff out there that you just can't, <laughs> can't get rid of. All right. This will at least knock it down a peg or two. And if you've got something like Hazaret out there, you can use this twice and get rid of it. Uh, yeah, that's probably good on those. You understand them. Yeah. Now, those deserts there, they both read sacrifice a desert. So you can sacrifice whatever desert you want. This is a good one to do. So you can pay three or four, depending on which one you're doing, tap them and sacrifice the Dunes of the Dead. And when you sacrifice this, it goes into the graveyard, you get a black zombie creature token in its place. So you get the added benefit there. You're not just losing a land, you're sacrificing a land to get a zombie creature token. Which will pump up your Mary Ark if it's on the field. Which will pump up your Mary Ark if it's on the field. Can't forget about that. Uh, another one that's going to give you a zombie in return is the Cradle of the Accursed. Same thing, pay three, tap it, sacrifice the Cradle of the Accursed, and you get a 2-2 two -two black zombie creature token in, in response. That also puts a, you know, a desert in your graveyard, so handy dandy. And then for our last non-basic land, we're running four copies of Blooming Marsh. Uh, helps out at the beginning of the games to get your mana fixed, and it's a, uh, you know, I think it's probably just a staple in any black green deck right now. Then we're running three copies of the forest and three copies of the swamp. Yay. Our, our mana mix is almost split perfectly down the middle. Uh, for our spells, we are running one additional green in the desert in, of the Indomitable. Everything else is split down the middle on the land base as well. So that's the deck. That's kind of how it's supposed to work. Uh, let's get into the sideboard. I had talked earlier about playing against control, so we put in three copies of the Prowling Serpapard. Can't be countered, makes it so that your other creatures can't be countered. 
there's a lot of control and a lot of removal in standard right now so having the serpapard will help get your creatures on the battlefield it forces them to remove this before they can counter anything else you've got to that same end we threw in three copies of Ronis gonna give you a big body that's indestructible makes them use an exile helps get some removal out of their hand because uh, if they don't Ronis is gonna turn into a problem helps with the Mary Arc too if that's as indestructible to that and that I mean, Ronis is good in a lot everything. of matchups everything, so everything, yeah. be, he's a three drop it's easy to activate him in this deck uh, and so, it, it, I mean, it'll be good against control and your aggro and mid-range decks. Yeah. We could have probably put him in the main board. Right. But, whatever. Uh, more control prevention stuff here. Heroic Intervention makes all your permanents hexproof and indestructible. So if somebody's trying to wipe the board on you, you can throw one of those out there. It saved me from a... Uh, what is it? Ronus's last word? Is that the one that kills all creatures? No, that's the one that gives a... Or Ronus's last stand, maybe? I thought you get a snake creature. Just kill everything else and the snake creature Not comes Ronus. Out? Bantu. Bantu, that sounds about right. Yeah. So, it saved me from one of those... Bantu's Reckoning? Something. Somebody knows. They know what we're talking about. Look it up. Look it up. Post it. Look it up! I'm gonna look some stuff up. Uh, and duress. <laughs> Simple one drop. You throw it out there against uh, control decks, or they get rid of something they don't want a to get lot rid of removal, or your God Pharaoh's gift, things like that. It can get rid of all that stuff before it's even played. And then for more creature-based decks, we put in four copies. I think I would run four copies of Rabbit Bite instead of three and one. This what I had was three copies of Rabid Bite and one of Prey Upon. Prey Upon's cheaper, but Rabid Bite, you don't have to worry about losing your creatures. So you can use Rabid Bite with your Narnum Renegade or your Ronus, even if it's not able to attack or block, you can still use Rabid Bite to get rid of uh, almost any creature. It deals... Somebody said it wasn't standard the other day, because this version is from Shadows Over Innistrad. But this card is also in the Welcome, to the Welcome 17. 17 pack. So it is standard legal. In case you're wondering. And then finally, a couple more removal spells. Walk the plank. So if you get in a matchup with dinosaurs or something that Fatal Push is just not going to handle, uh, you can put out the walk, walk the it. plank and take care of those problems too. So, whoop. whoop Hello. Whoop, we're making a mess. Uh -oh. So that's that's what we came up with. We had this kind of going for about a week or so, and that's uh, it's not really a lot of time to put together and test a deck, but I think it was fun to play. It's definitely fun to play. It's not necessarily going to be competitive, and with some of the cards in there like Ronus and the Prophet, it's not necessarily a budget deck either, but you could replace those cards reasonably easily. To make it more of a budget friendly deck uh, and I think the one thing I like the most about it is it's not just a freaking tribal deck that Ixalan and Rivals of Ixalan is bred and it's not one of your other net decks is right. what we call them we built it from scratch it's a and there may be something similar to this out there but we well, didn't look we, anything yeah. up we just <laughs> looked, tried to put cards together that matched and uh, I think it came out pretty well. It played pretty well when we've used it. So there's there could be some tweaks. Make sure you leave a comment, suggest suggestions. Uh, if your suggestion is to throw it in the fireplace, <laughs> we don't need it. Uh, we'll do another one next week. <laughs> now, yeah. That speaking of right now, last week I, when I did this random card selection, I didn't let anyone see. So we're gonna. Make sure everybody can see. We're going to pick a new card and start a new deck this week. And next week, we will... Keep talking. You're fine. Oh, sorry. I just... Go. You almost gave me a stroke. No. So next week, we'll post a new deck tech video with what we come up with. Don't do it yet, though. But on a side note, before he picks up the new card, um, we talked about the uh, Exile, the Graveyard stuff. I was looking it up because he was talking, so I want to do something. Just I'm sure you all can look it up your, yourself. But Scavenger Grounds is the one that's the land that does that. 
Um, Sentinel Totem is a one drop that uh, has option to exile all cards from graveyard. Silent Gravestone is the new artifact one drop. This has a similar option um, for removal. Um, Crook of Condemnation, um, which is a two drop artifact. And then if, depending on how it sets up in your deck, um, a two drop artifact creature, which I didn't realize was in here until I saw this, Watchers of the Dead. Doesn't get rid of everything in the graveyard, but it makes them choose only two. And you know how God Pharaoh's gift works, they gotta pull stuff from the graveyard. So if they keep God Pharaoh's gift but nothing else to use, you slow them down a little bit. That only affects the opponent's graveyard though, right? Uh, yeah, it says each opponent chooses two cards in his or her graveyard and exiles the rest. Yeah. So that's not a bad option too, depending on what your deck or what you are doing with that at that time. Alright. Thank you. This. Thank Sorry. you. Yep, you're welcome. Uh so. Random card. I'm going to press random card. I've already got it set up to select a standard, rare, or mythic. So... Come on, give us something good! We get... <laughs> time Stream Navigator. Ooh, a new one. Let's see what this is. Are we just going with creatures? Is that what we... No. Nope. Anything? It'll do anything. This is a cool card. Alright. It's a two-drop 1-1 one, one that has a send. Uh, if you have the city's blessing, you can pay two blue and two others, tap it, and put Time Stream Navigator on the bottom of its owner's library to take an extra turn after this one. Ooh. So we will... I don't know if you can see that. I'll put another image on the screen, though. Uh, Time Stream Navigator. So, I'm sure there's some fun ways to get that back. And reuse it multiple times. Diabolic Tutor. Maybe the first thing that comes to mind is using Sahili Ray to make copies of it. Oh, yeah, yeah. So we can just make, make infinite turns or <laughs> a lot of extra turns. But you just have to wait a turn because it's going to have a summoning sickness option. Well, first turn you wouldn't be able to. You just have to wait until you have a sin. I see what you're saying, but yeah. We're gonna. Either we're way, not, we're not gonna brainstorm right now. But there's our card. You can see where we're going with it. Next week, probably Monday or Tuesday, we'll do a brainstorming video. And next time, this week, Thursday, we'll have the uh, Time Stream Navigator deck ready to go. So thanks for watching. Like I said, if you have any comments or suggestions on the Hydra deck, let us know. Make sure you subscribe, share with your friends. Retweet our box videos for free stuff. Yeah, check out our other videos. We've got four different giveaways going on right now. And uh, all you got to do is subscribe to the channel and find us on Twitter and follow us there. Retweet one of our tweet. Retweet. Retweet. <laughs> Retweet! Retweet the tweet about our video the other day. And uh, that's all you have to do to be entered. And they're good giveaways, so check them out. And we will see you next week. Deuces!